Please join me now in welcoming Rachel Nielsen. Rachel Nielsen, founder and CEO of Rags, started her children's clothing company with function, fashion, and fit being her main focus. Rags' unique and functional kids' one pieces are void of frustrating snaps and buttons and feature an elastic neckline for easy on and easy off. Rags has been featured in Vogue, Huffington Post, Forbes, and just recently partnered with Disney's Star Wars and Marvel. What started as a handmade hobby trying to solve a problem ended up becoming a multi-million dollar business. Here's Rachel on purchase, purpose, and party. Grow and retain the right way. Hey, hey, uh, as you know, Rachel Nielsen from Rags. Uh, I am so excited to be here. Thank you to Weave. This is such a cool thing that they're doing. And when they reached out and asked if I wanted to be a part of it, I was not only flattered, but I was stoked to be able to come on and share a little bit about myself, my company, and how we got from literally nothing to something. So hopefully what I share today is useful and you can take something and, and use it to your advantage. Um, so today I was asked to speak on how I grew to where we are and then how did we retain the customer. And I was excited that I get to speak about this because that's something I think we do really good at and I'm proud of and um, sort of interesting. So I'm going to jump in um, and I have my notes here. So don't be, if I keep looking down, it's because I want to make sure I'm giving everybody, you know, the good bullet points and some quality quality takeaways. Okay, so I started my company a little over four years ago, um, and I was a stay-at-home mom. I have three young boys. My youngest is a wriggly toddler who was crazy, and every single time I changed his diaper, I would get frustrated with the one-piece outfits with the snaps. I loved the functionality of it, but I hated that it was such a hassle. Plus, it kind of looked cheesy. So. I took one of my, my husband was in law school at the time and we were literally super, super duper poor. Um, and I took one of his t-shirts out of the closet and I cut it up and sewed it and I made a one piece romper. We call it now the rag. And I put it on my boy and I was like, dude, this thing looks awesome. It looks great and it functions well. And my kid was happy. He, it wasn't like a wrestling match every time I changed a diaper. And it seemed so simple. And there was nothing in the market that, that fit all three things, the fit, the fashion, and the function. Um, and so one night I was in bed and it kind of dawned on me that we were out of money and we were thinking, I was thinking, how can I help my family make ends meet? And one night it dawned on me like, holy cow, you can get, you could sell direct to consumer through social media. So I started an Instagram account and I started selling my kids hand-me-down clothes on there. And I posted this one piece romper and the reaction was insane. And I realized, holy cow, I'm, I'm onto something. And so I quickly like set out and just got, you know, the materials to, to make this this product and I was selling them and I was selling out really, really fast. And I noticed that moms everywhere were excited about the product. Um, so I got it into manufacturing and started building a small little business from my parents' basement apartment. Fast forward like a year, uh, I had this novel idea to go and audition for Shark Tank, which was super cool super scary, um, but also panned out and was really great for our brand. It kind of got us on the map. Um, throughout that journey, we had a ton of social media influencers posting about us, and it was literally word of mouth. I think it's because moms got the product and they loved it so much that they were so willing to share, uh, which is actually super valuable. And, and the more and more I've learned to, through business, the more and more I've learned how awesome word of mouth is and great reviews are. So. Went on Shark Tank, uh, we were highlighted in Huffington Post, we were highlighted in Vogue. Uh, I think Huffington Post was like top 15 coolest kid brands in America. And Vogue was top 25 must have gifts for your young one. Which, all of these were organic, all, none of these I even knew about. In fact, friends were like texting me and congratulating me on these articles that I had no idea existed. So it was super cool, but it also showed that there was power in a great product. And so when, when I talk about our growth, um, that's something that I continue to focus on is a lot of people say, content is king, content is king. I actually agree, content is so important, 
but I think product is king. I think if you can, because, you know, in the beginning of my business, I, I was super passionate about what I was doing and I actually felt like there was a void in the marketplace. Um, but my content wasn't great. I was like on my iPhone and I would have to wait until the sun came up at like a certain time, 3, 3 p.m. And I went to Home Depot and got just a plain whiteboard and I would lay it on there and take a picture on my iPhone and post. Um, but because I was able to create a good product that there was a need for, um, moms everywhere were wanting to share and, and that's kind of, it kind of snowballed from there. Um, I'm gonna check in and make sure I'm catching everything. Anyway, so that, that, that was like the number one, that's like the number one um, important lesson is no matter what you're selling, no matter what you're doing, what you're providing, is it quality? Um, you want to make sure that you are proud of what you're putting out there. And obviously, as you go and as you, you know, you learn, you can iterate along the way. But make sure that the product is is quality, and it's something that you really do believe in because I think people can feel that, and and they they thrive on that. So product is king. Um, started started growing rapidly, and we ended up getting deals with Disney and Star Wars and Marvel, and um, which has been so exciting and so fun. Um, and obviously, you know, those have been great for the brand and great exposure. Um, and we've just recently toured across the United States and opened up a bunch of Nordstrom locations. So we're just dig digging into the retail side of, of the business. And what's been really, really interesting, um, I'm gonna move to the next slide, is this says experience is queen. So when I was first beginning, I was noticing that, you know, who, who, number one, who is my consumer? What makes them tick? It actually was really easy for me to decide who my consumer was because I was my own consumer. Um, but I really dug into like what, what makes this experience unique? What am I providing these moms um, other than just an awesome product? What am I providing them? And uh, early on, we were selling out so fast. It was almost, it was totally on accident. But I started realizing, you know what, there is, there's like magic in this ex experience. There's like sort of like this adrenaline, you know, when you talk to, when you talk to anybody my age and you ask them, where did you get those shoes? It's like so much sweeter to tell your friends, like, I got them, I got them at Nordstrom and they were only 30 bucks. Like people love to talk about their scores, especially women. And so I knew in my, in my specific, you know, with my specific consumer, I knew exactly what made them tick. And so I wanted to create an experience. And I wanted to do something that was fresh and new, and I was trying to figure out how do I get people to come back to my website? How do I retain these customers that I've already gotten? Um, and our retention rate is absolutely insane. It's like, I think eight out of 10 people that buy come back and buy again. And a lot of it is because we've created this experience of of FOMO. So we have limited edition releases every single week, which is a lot. And that's something that I wanted to do early on because I wanted to figure out how can I keep getting these consumers to come back and buy. And if I, and, and that's, that's initially when I started figuring and thinking through they need, they want, and they crave this experience. Um, you can see in the slide, there's, these are real stash shots from real customers. We have hundreds and thousands of these types of photos from real life moms who are, have bought into the brand and love the experience and obviously great product to back it up. So when, when I think about how do you retain a customer, I think about nowadays and, and just the, you know, kind of the direction things are headed, people are craving a unique experience. You look at like big department stores and they're like groveling for smaller brands because they know that these smaller brands have this touch with their consumer that they'll never get. And, and a lot of what is unique about these smaller brands is they, they can provide a unique experience. So what, whether, whether you're, you know, any, any type of field, I think, I think we've already covered the product part, but also I think what is very, like equally as important is experience. What kind of experience can I create that's a little bit unique for my consumer? Who is my consumer? What makes them tick? Why, why, what, what kind of experience can I provide for them that can keep them coming back and buying into this, into my brand? And a lot of that is just digging into consumer insights and understanding, you know, that, that's also been a massive learning for me is just how important it is to dig into that consumer. And what we've learned is there's different types of, of women and, 
and this one over here listens to this type of music and shops here while this one over here listens to this kind of music and like these restaurants and you know so it really can get so granular and then you can start de depicting what what type of experience are these are these women craving um, that has been something that we have been very fortunate uh, and it's also as we're growing and scaling I'm realizing how important that really really is to them there's so much space and there's so much loud noise in our space that that if I can't create something sorry if I can't create something that's unique and and exciting for them then then we will be easily ignored there's so many things coming in and and distracting distracting consumers so experience I wrote here on the slide, experience is queen. So build an experience that keep customers coming back and engaged. Uh, what, what, what also has been really cool is, is because we, so our model specifically is, is a limited edition model where we'll release stuff once or twice a week consistently. And once it's sold out, it's gone for good. So as we were doing this, I noticed that there was these little um, Facebook groups that kept spinning up. And they were Facebook groups of moms, and they, they became like these mob communities of moms talking about rags. And they were buying and they were selling and trading rags. And that was something that just totally came organic, but it was because of the experience that we were creating. And it, it ended up becoming, you know, we started, we started our own as a brand just because I wanted to tap into that community. I wanted to have it be more intimate. And we, I started noticing once, once we did that, this was like a whole nother sales funnel. You know, there, there's so many moms in these communities that are watching other moms talk and sell and buy and trade this, these clothes that now we're seeing a lot of our customers because of that experience and because of that community that we've provided for them. A lot of our customers, the way that they've heard about rags has been through these small subgroups that we haven't even been a part of or that we haven't even started. Um, so like I said, we started our own just to build a platform that people can come and talk about rags and what's coming and the sneak peeks and it's really digging into kind of creating even more of an experience. And, and it's funny because we'll see stash shots like this and it's almost like bragging rights, like, oh, I have the craziest stash shot. And so we'll see these pop up on the things. But this right here is like, you know, the slides that you're looking at is, sorry, I keep pointing because the slides are over here. but. The slides that you're looking at are, are, I mean, that's retention. You know, that's over and over and over buying um, and repeat buying. So product is king. Experience, I would say, is queen. And I think you can make that, you know, relatable to any, any type of business. Okay, we'll keep cruising. So we, I highlighted just five bullet points, um, roadmap for growth and retention. So one is find the right product or service. So identify a need, recognize a gap, and address it. So for us, I mean, it was a one piece. And if somebody, if I would have sat down and told somebody, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a one piece of clothing romper, and it's going to have an elastic neckline that you can easily pull on and off your kid, we're not going to deal with the snaps around the inner leg. And not only that, I'm, it's, it's going to grow to be a multi-million dollar business. I seriously think every single person would have laughed and been like, bless your heart, you know, way to shoot for the stars, but there is no way. Um, but because I knew, I knew myself and I am my own consumer and I knew that it was a little bit different, it didn't, I didn't need to reinvent the wheel, I knew I was onto something. So it doesn't need to be this overwhelming, big, giant, you know, you're reinventing something. It can be small little iterations, it can be small little tweaks. So find the right product or service and usually it's because it's something that you need yourself. Um, two, play the game. So. Create and drive interest through unique outreach and engagement. I love this one. We always talk about gamifying your experience. Um, so somehow figure out, and that also can be a small iteration. It doesn't need to be you know, a whole, it doesn't need to feel overwhelming, but figure out how you can make that a fun, cool, interesting experience for your consumer. Three, keep customers engaged and build a community. So utilize multiple channels to engage with customers and be consistent. I've told you the value of the community that we've built online. It's a private Facebook group. People have to apply. There's um, six, I think a little over 16,000 members and that's through application only. So we turn a lot of people away and we let, we let people in that understand the brand and I think a lot of that's just to, just to make sure we're not getting trolls. But 16, over 16,000 members are in this, in this private Facebook group and 85% of those members are actively engaged every single day. Um, so there's massive value with, with creating a platform that your community can go and, and, and 
just help build, build your brand. Four, keep things interesting. It goes back to play the game. So gamify it, keep things interesting. Figure out how can I make this just a little bit more interesting. It doesn't need to feel overwhelming. Five, make customers feel valued. Everybody craves that. Everybody craves validation. Unfortunately, I think that's why social media is a thing. It's because it's, it's putting yourself out there and, and you get immediate validation. So we know that this generation craves validation. So make your customers feel valued. And that can be as little as package inserts or, and, and that's for direct to consumer, but also if you're in the service, if you're doing tech or if you're uh, in the, you know, the medical field or whatever, you understand and know making your customers feel valued, they will come back over and over and over. Um, I think anybody could remember a good service when they walked into a, a dentist or a doctor or the hair salon or there's things that set other places apart. And so people, people crave, crave feeling valued. Um, and this is my last, my last slide. So biggest, biggest learnings hopefully that you can take away is, is obviously create something that's unique in product and something that's different. Um, and then what you do with that is, is creating an experience to retain those customers, to get them to come back. Those are huge, massive lessons that I've learned that has been, that has worked in our favor. So I will leave you with this, product and experience. Retention and growth will develop naturally by providing the right products or services and through building a community of customers that look forward to engaging with your brand. But bam thank you for having me. I'm so stoked that we've, we've asked me to do this and it's so exciting to share that with you and, and yeah, hopefully you learned something new.